Black Box, a bipartisan group of senators are releasing their blueprint to modernize and reform the nation's housing finance system. The leading senators on the bill are here with us now this morning. Senators Mark Warner and Bob Corker, both from the Banking Committee, uh, join us with more. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Uh, walk us through what this plan is and how it works. Well, it, uh, you know, Andrew, it winds down Fannie and Freddie over a five-year period. It puts in place a new system that requires 10% capital in front of any government reinsurance program. And I think what it does is bring discipline back into the housing finance sector where you don't have private gains and public losses. It's something that both the two of us have worked on for a long time. We have uh, six other co-sponsors, and we look forward to introducing this bill today. Mark's right. been a great partner in this. And, and Andrew, I think what we... This was the one piece of financial reform that still hasn't been completed. And now that the housing market has come back, um, what we say is before we just kind of allow the status quo to continue, right. let's go ahead and fix this. We think that we've done, uh, we've got a great framework here that kind of uh, hits the right marks. Um, I think we're going to see uh, generally some pretty positive response right. from industry. And uh, I think this is a good, at least, beginning Senator, point for this discussion. Senators, let me ask you this. Uh, James Milstein, who served as the chief restructuring sure. officer uh, in Obama's Treasury Department, says actually that Fannie and Freddie should be fixed. Not that they should disappear, that they can be fixed. John Paulson, the hedge fund manager, uh, Bruce Berkowitz, others have also embraced this idea that we can actually fix Fannie and Freddie. Are they wrong? Well, listen, I think the guys who want the status quo, some of these guys who've all, by the way, got economic interest in that residual part of Fannie and Freddie that all want to say, basically, let's just go out and recap and keep the status quo. Uh, I don't think they're, you know, they bought a lottery ticket. I'm not sure they're going to be successful. They've got a separate lawsuit going with Treasury at this point. We think we've got a new architecture that candidly puts more private capital at risk, protects the taxpayer better, maintains the ability to have the government wrapped so you got a 30-year fixed product, takes out the social function comport, uh, portion and segregates it out and say, all right, if we're going to support uh, low-income housing, let's, uh, let's charge a small fee for those uh, mortgages that, are, that uh, get this government wrapped. We think we've got a better architecture than the status quo. Well, Senators, you, you say that it protects the taxpayer from the risk that was inherent in, in Fannie during the crisis, but um, in effect, a lot of this risk would be then introduced to the banking system because they would be holding a lot of these mortgages on their books. I mean, how have you structured this to keep some of that risk from being in the banking system then? Oh, I think we've uh, created mechanisms where you have an A, a B subpiece to A, credit link notes, private bond, bond guarantors. I think there'll be another all kinds of ways to guarantee and put up this 10 percent equity. So, look, I think it'd be good if uh, these loans were held by institutions like uh, banks. But I think what we've done is created something. For instance, today with five trillion dollars at Fannie and Freddie, there would have to be 500 billion dollars in private capital in advance of that and I think uh, that's exactly the kind of system that we need to have. The people you talked about who want to just re-IPO Fannie and Freddie, many of them are friends. They've been in to see us. They see us more and more as they buy more and more of these junior preferred shares. I know that they have economic interests. I don't think they're going to do well with that. But look, uh, I think everyone knows that Fannie and Freddie uh, the way they were set up with private gains and public losses was not a good, a fair deal for taxpayers. This is a change that keeps the liquidity in the market. Hopefully we'll be successful. I right. do think there's energy here in Congress to take this on and hopefully we'll do something that certainly moves us away from the status quo. Do you think some beyond those who have what you call economic interests uh, may be apprehensive to do anything at this point, just considering the fact, and I'll, I'll ask this to Senator Warner, uh, because of the growing profits that, that the GSEs are, are now making, some may be just turned off altogether by doing anything. I actually think that um, those growing profits, and I think some of those profits were extraordinary last quarter when they re remarked their book, uh, but I think uh, some of those growing profits may actually be an incentive to move because there would be fear that, oh my gosh, Congress may go ahead and take the G fees and go ahead and use them for something else. So in a strange way, their profitability may move some off the sidelines. But I think those who, you know, those who have economic interest may not have uh, great things to say. Those who want to have 
a, a private only system, but I think the vast majority of, of folks, uh, the vast majority of industry who knows we need a new system, we need a new architecture, we need to make sure that we put more private capital at risk, still have that government backstop, but set it up kind of an FDIC type model where there's a, a reinsurance fund. Uh, I, think we've, uh, I think we've hit a good mark here. Senator Corker, you, you guys keep referring to these, you know, in quotes, those people who have economic interests. Now, I'm just curious, what do you make of the fact that you have investors who are buying the common stock, you're buying yeah. the they're buying the preferred, um, regardless of how you want to characterize them? Yeah. What do you think of that? Oh, gosh, I think people, uh, you know, this free enterprise try to figure out ways of uh, making money. And when you combine for pennies on the dollar, uh, you know, it's it's a uh, you know it's calculated something wrong, risk. Is there something I, wrong with it? No, I, I have no problem with it whatsoever. And that's an issue, by the way, that many of them will settle with their suit with Treasury over the things that right. happened in the past. But that's not what this bill attempts to do. This bill attempts to move away from the status quo, as we've mentioned, and to put private capital in advance of taxpayers. That suit will be settled by others. You know, we're the legislative branch, not the judiciary. Right. And so they can, you know, whatever they do, they do. But, uh, yeah, this, is, this has nothing to do with personalities or people. Right. We're trying to put in place a system that will stand the test of time. Senator if Fannie and Freddie, let me just say this. If Fannie and Freddie had just had 5% capital in advance of the government guarantees that were there, there would have been no taxpayer losses. We've right. designed a system that has 10% capital in advance with all kinds of other belts and suspenders. So we think we've done a good thing. It's a beginning place. Any bill can be improved. We hope it'll have a markup in committee and go to the Senate floor. And hopefully we can move ahead with a system that meets the, the test of time. Uh, Senator, one of the critiques is this, this doesn't really look at the banking industry at all. And, and the critique here, this is from Jesse Eisinger, he says that the oligopoly of giant banks controlling the mortgage market lead to higher rates. Do you believe that? And do you believe that your bill or any other bill should deal with that? Well, one of the components of the bill, and I'm not sure whether that gentleman's actually read the bill since it hasn't been introduced yet, but we do make sure that by, in effect, creating a co-op uh, with pieces of Fannie and Freddie that will allow access for small community-based banks, for credit unions and others to still have the...